four-part series. What we're going to be looking at is we're going to be peering into uh, the Sermon on the Mount and going to be examining uh, what Jesus says about these storms that come up in our lives and, and how we can gain strength and faith to withstand any of them that we may face. And we begin looking at that in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. If we read, it says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been built on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the wind and the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. There's this false idea that we have developed in Christianity that if you follow Jesus, bad things won't happen. You know, if you just give this much money, or if you just say this prayer, or if you just do this thing, or show up at this place a certain time of the week, that that Nothing bad will ever fall. And, and the thing is, is that's not reality. If we look at what Jesus says here, he says, when the floods came, the rain fell, the winds blew, the floods came. I mean, it's not if these things are going to happen, but when are they going to happen? We know that in our lives, storms will come. Rain. Floods. Wind. People leave our lives, you know, whether it's through departing, uh, whether it's through a breakup, whether it's through uh, a dysfunction in a relationship, people leave. Jobs change. These relationships that we are in are complex sometimes. And so when we, when we look at that, we see that storms will come. Many of us are in the midst of one right now. You know, for some of us, it seems like our lives are just one storm, and then as soon as one ends, uh, it's a long time before we encounter another one. You know, they, they may seem sort of scattered, but for many of us, it seems like we just move from one storm to the next. When one subsides, there's another one coming. We are standing in the eye of it, and we're watching all of this chaos and complexity and frustration and struggle going on around us, and we begin to ask ourselves, why is this happening? What is the purpose of this? What good can come from all this chaos that is weighing down my heart? And so what I admire about the Bible, uh, one of the things I admire about the Bible is that it deals with real life. You know, so many people say they just don't, don't get what the Bible is saying or that it just doesn't seem to be applicable. And the thing is, is, the Bible speaks right into the midst of our situation, right into the midst of what our struggle is. You know, Jesus taught an unprocessed reality which deals with the storms, details the outcomes, what choices uh, we make can affect how these outcomes are going to be. And he faces the truth, whether we like it or not. Sometimes it's easier for us to continue believing a lie because at least we're comfortable with that. But when Jesus comes in and he, and he breaks into our, our experience and he wrecks our presuppositions and he comes in and he says, this is true. This is reality. So how do we deal with these struggles? Because what I hear Jesus saying here at the end of Matthew uh, chapter 7 is that if you hear these words of mine, and what words is he talking about? Well, he's talking about the Sermon on the Mount. Everything he's just said up to this. This is one of his longest dialogues. And, and Matthew is very much a didactic book. And, you know, he teaches uh, a lot more so than maybe some of the other gospel writers. Um, but here we see Jesus says, if you, if you hear these words of mine and you do them, you will be like a wise man who built his house upon a solid foundation. And so Jesus is showing us that these storms will come, and this is how you stand firm in them. This is how you stand in the storm. So how do we deal with these struggles? Well, there's this interesting thing about struggle. It seems like we 
don't want to deal with struggle. You know, me personally, I'd rather act like things aren't happening. I'd rather ignore the problems in, in hopes that they will go away. If I ignore that stack of bills, if I ignore these, these difficulties in my relationships, if I ignore these things that I'm struggling with, then, then maybe they'll just go away. And that's, that's not what happens. <laughs> they just get worse. And uh, one, one prominent Christian leader says that all life demands struggle. Those who have everything given to them become lazy, selfish, and insensitive to the real values of life. The very striving and hard work that we so constantly try to avoid is the major building block in the person we are today. You know, I think when we look back at our lives, the things that were most defining for us, the things that, that brought us to the person we are today were these struggles. You know, I was talking with my dad and he, he told me about this quote that, that really uh, he likes and, and gives him focus. And, and it's really changed the way I think. And it's so simple. You know, it seems like these things that really change our paradigm, the way we see, uh, are simple. But, but we just need to point it out for us. And, and it says, you know, this old ancient proverb says, if you want to know where you are today, look at your past actions. You know, where we are right now is the culmination of small choices over the course of a long period of time. But then it doesn't stop there. It says, if you want to know your future, look at your present choices. So, so how are you choosing? How are you acting right now? It's going to affect who you are and, and what's going to happen in the future. And I, I hear so many people, I talk to so many people, and they have this optimistic hope for the future, and they, they, they always think the future's going to be better, but you ask them, well, what are you doing differently now than you have in the past? And they'll look at you strangely because they haven't really thought about that. You know, that we have to make different choices today if we want a different future. And so when I look at this, Jesus says, if you want a different outcome when these storms come, you have to hear the words I say. You have to do the things. And you have to embrace this struggle. You know, we have to embrace this understanding that life is struggle. And that somewhere deep within the complex mysteries of God, he has a plan for struggle. We know in Romans, he tells us that all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. And so we know that somewhere deep within God's plan is a plan for working through struggle, uh, sort of this redemptive pain that, that can bring us into a new intimacy. And so how do we begin to find strength to stand in these storms? How do we begin to understand these things that are taught? Well, if you really look at these ethics, if you look at all these teachings that, that he has given on the Sermon on the Mount, we see that they are all about living out the kingdom life. Like this is this is the way God's kingdom works. And it flips our, our own thoughts, it flips our own understanding up on its head because it confronts our shallow culture. It confronts our superficial cliches, these old worn out platitudes, these old worn out sayings that that we have heard and, and even said ourselves. I've caught myself saying them over and over and over again, but they don't bring the truth of God into our experience. And, and I, I think sometimes when people get really frustrated with church or they get frustrated with, with faith or, or whatever else, it's because they, they feel like it doesn't have the response to address the depths of their needs. And that's not true. Sometimes we don't dive deep enough into it. You know, our spirituality is just sort of pedestrian. It's casual. Uh, it's something that we can sort of pick up and put down when we like it. And, and that's not what kingdom living is all about. The kingdom living is where, where God's eternal realities break into our present experience. And so when we look at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, we see that this is happening in a radical way when Jesus is teaching the Beatitudes. You know, Beatitude, the, these blessings, when he says here, blessed are the or blessed are those who mourn. You know, he's saying happier, 
better off, more fortunate are you if you are one of these things. Now, if I were to write a list of what blessing looks like in our lives, I think I would not, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't write these things um, had I not heard them from, from Jesus. For me, I, I think I would say, blessed are those who are wealthy. Blessed are those who have lots of family. Or blessed are those who, uh, who have financial security. Blessed are those who uh, have have good jobs. Or blessed are those who, who are happy. Um, Jesus says, no, this is what blessing looks like. And so I just want to listen to us to listen to some of these words that he says in conjunction with blessing and, and just sort of how they break our perceived reality, how they, how they totally shake up the way we understand life. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst, the merciful. The pure peacemakers, the persecuted. <laughs> that that last one, really, I, I struggle with that. I mean, in the midst of persecution, you know, from a theological perspective, I see that that God uses persecution and, and He uses the seed of martyrs to to expand the, the boundaries of the kingdom. And I see all these incredible individuals in the book of Acts that under persecution, like Stephen, you know, under persecution, who have this unshakable, tremendous uh, faith. And I look at that and I say, if I were persecuted, would I be the same way? You know, when I come under difficult circumstances, when I'm born, when I'm hungering and thirsting for, for more in life, for greater depth in spirit, when I feel poor, impoverished in spirit, because I see the the weight of my needs, I'm not sure that I feel like I'm being blessed. Uh, you know, I see blessing as you know happy times, and, and when things are just going, everything's going great. You know, man, we're so blessed. But that's where Jesus takes his kingdom reality and he shakes up our spiritual experience. You know, one writer said, if we were to set out to establish a religion in the polar opposition to the Beatitudes Jesus taught, it would look strikingly similar to the pop Christianity that has taken over the airways of North America. You see, these Beatitudes bring a greater depth because they're from an eternal perspective. We have a hard time connecting the blessing of mourning with the blessing of we have a hard time connecting uh, the blessing of being meek, of being humble, of, of allowing others to be first with the understanding that we are going to be inheriting the earth in the time of renewal. Um, you know, if you look at a similar account of this in Luke, I mean, he doesn't just talk about the spiritual reality of this. I mean, he says, blessed are you poor. Blessed are you when you're hungering and thirsting now, um, very much the, the physical side of things. And so when we, when we look at this, Jesus teaches a kingdom that sometimes has been called an upside down kingdom. Um, it takes our, our own understanding of what kingdom life should look like and it flips it on its head. And so it, it takes and instills these ethics that break the eternal into our present experience. So when we live out these ways, when we hear Jesus say these things, when we start to, to look, begin to explore what this looks like in our lives, uh, we, we begin to see things from God's perspective. We begin to have an eternal view of, of what life should look like. And it changes everything. It changes everything. And so... When we talk about storms, you know, oftentimes what we think about is we think about like shelter. So how can these beatitudes provide shelter from the storm? When these storms hit, we need a shelter. We need something that's going to bring us protection. It's going to bring us uh, warmth. 
closeness, community. And, and I, I see that through this, uh, through these blessings, as we begin to understand what each of these mean, when we begin to explore what these look like in our lives outside of these times of storm as well as within them, uh, we begin to understand that, that God is in the midst of each of these, that his presence brings us these promises that are connected with the blessings. And I think about this, and, and I look back at what he said in Matthew 7, where you hear these words, you do these. And, and what brings me to mind is uh, I heard a story about Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a, a Lutheran theologian, uh, very instrumental in the time of, of Hitler and trying to remove him from power, and very, very deep thinker. And I had heard a story one time about him, him teaching these Beatitudes, and, and the congregation would come in, and he would read the two, read these Beatitudes to the congregation, and then he would say, go and learn what these mean. Then the next week, they would come back in, and he would read them again. We have to understand what the Beatitudes mean, what they look like, how they feel. How do we learn to live in a kingdom way? You see, when we live these things out, we're, we're building a kingdom here. When we live these things out, we are bringing God's eternity into now. And we'll talk about that more next week about kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven but but for right now i just want us to think about what the how do these beatitudes shake up how i understood blessing and and how i understand blessing from my own perspective how are they setting me up for building a, a house in Satan? and and then the third question is what will this look like for me You know, we talked about towards the beginning of the lesson how, how life is a struggle and that, that somewhere in God's plan there's, there's a, a way for this redemptive pain. And, and one author to close, I read, I really admire his work. His name's Brendan Manning. He, he made the statement, he said, suffering, failure, loneliness, and sorrow, discouragement and death will be part of your journey. Kingdom of God will conquer all these horrors. No evil can resist grace forever. And so this week, as you go, as you are learning what these beatitudes look like in your life, as you encounter the storms that, that do come, remember that God's kingdom is great. That, that when we see things from the kingdom perspective, when we see things from these eternal realities that are these promises that are connected with the Beatitudes, that we will begin to understand what it means to stand when the storms of life hit us. We will be able to find shelter and protection in those difficult times. And we will grow more closely to the community of faith and, and also to God. Thank you.